As we near the end of the home theater build series, speakers need to be set up, cable channels need to be painted and reinstalled, and some other things need to be addressed. While the finish line is closer than it's ever been, we still have a ways to go before we get there. What's up guys, in this video, which is episode five of my home theater build series, where I take a standard sized bedroom in my house and convert it into a dedicated theater space, I'll be installing some in-ceiling speakers for Dolby Atmos, and I'll also be painting the cable concealers I put up on the wall in the last video. And then I'm gonna set up the speakers with a laser level for the first time. I don't know how that's gonna go. I might just ditch the whole idea. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about some other things and just have a good old time. So. What do you say we get started? So the first thing I needed to do was cut holes in the ceiling tiles for the height channel speakers. Now I ended up going with the Polk VT60 in-ceiling speakers after doing some research and I felt they should be a decent fit for my current Pioneer Andrew Jones speakers. Using the cutout template that came in the speaker box and then using a utility knife to score the outline, I was able to actually use a drywall saw to get a pretty clean cut on the ceiling panels. Now in retrospect, I really should have traced the template on the back side of the ceiling panel because it would have been way easier to see, but hey, I learned my lesson and the second cutout, which I didn't record, went way smoother. After that, I used a cutout on the ceiling panel to trace another cutout on a two by two piece of drywall. I glued the piece of drywall to the back of the ceiling panel as a sort of brace so the weight of the in-ceiling speaker would be supported and I wouldn't have to worry about the ceiling panel getting deformed over time as gravity likes to work its ugly magic. Now, after everything was glued together and ready to go, I attached the speaker to the ceiling panel. Now, can you tell I actually went to film school for four years because I mean, look at how well this shot is framed. I then put the ceiling tiles up for both in-ceiling speakers and attached a speaker wire. Notice how close the speakers are to the sidewalls? Yeah, so not the greatest height channel placement and totally not in the right place. I'll be correcting that in the next video. With the height channel set up improperly for now, I moved on to getting the five bed channels set up, which are the left and right surrounds, as well as the left, center, and right speakers. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to try to use a laser level to help get things aligned, and this did work out pretty well. I set up my U-Mic measurement microphone in the center armrest between the two theater seats as sort of a laser target. Now, neither seat is located directly in the center of the room and is offset quite a bit, so the center armrest seemed like a good middle ground target. Now for the surround speakers, this was completely fine as all I had to do was make sure the vertical line on the laser level was hitting the U-mic. The center speaker was a bit more difficult as the placement alone makes it hard to angle properly, but I found sitting the laser level flush in front of the tweeter worked out pretty well and I was able to aim it at around ear height. I do really want to figure out a better spot for the center channel though at some point as putting it in the entertainment stand like this, even though the back is completely open, won't result in the best sound. The front left and right speakers were somewhat difficult as well. If I tried to get that vertical line to hit the U-mic, just like the surround speakers, well, the front speakers would be towed in way too much. I instead opted to try and make sure the center point on the laser level was hitting the outside stitching on each of the headrests. Doing so was fairly easy and got me the toe in I was after. With the speaker set up and in place, I could move on to painting the cable channels. Now, if you've been following this build series, you'll know that I originally planned on painting the cable channels the color of the wall in the last video. However, I had a bunch of these little end pieces and I decided to do a quick test and paint one flat black. And honestly, I knew as soon as I looked at it after it dried that I also wanted to paint the cable channels flat black too. Not only was this easier because let's face it, spray paint in a can is much easier to work with than thinning paint and putting it into a paint sprayer. It also broke up the wall just enough while also not straying from the dark gray and black aesthetic of the room I was going for. Now, I personally think it looks awesome, but you may disagree and that's okay. There was also a couple things I wanted to address, the door rattle being the first one. Now, after I painted the door, put it back on the hinges with the help of my wife and installed the doorknob, it was pretty loose in the frame. This proved to be a major issue and the door would rattle with any deep bass that would play at any time. So I grabbed some cheap black weather stripping off of Amazon, put some at the top of the door frame, as well as some smaller strips in other spots, and I think it worked out pretty well. The second thing to address was the light leakage from the bottom of the door. Now I snagged a cheap black door draft stopper from Amazon, measured and cut it to length, and then put it on the bottom of the door. This worked out perfectly. No more light leakage at all. I had also planned on installing a white one on the other side of the door for good measure, but... You know what's great about these door draft stoppers? Mm -hmm. They're cheap, 
because I just cut one too short. So a lot of work has been done on the theater room and we're nearly at the finish line with both this home theater build series and the home theater room itself. Now, if you've been watching this video closely, you might've noticed in a couple shots that I have some metal hangers on the wall with numbers and letters on them, and then an acoustic panel just randomly hanging in one of the shots. You're like, where did that come from? Well, spoiler alert, I made it myself and I'll be covering that in the next video. Not necessarily a how-to, but how I made them and how I chose where to put them based on some things, because that's kind of difficult if you've never done it before. I actually may do a completely separate video at some point going over just the basics on where you can put acoustic panels. I'll also go over how I've solved the AC vent mystery and figure that out, which wasn't easy, as well as some other things, because there's a couple odds and ends that need to be addressed. But after that, I mean, we're nearly done. So if you're really excited for the next video, please make sure you're subscribed if you don't wanna miss it. So speaking of the next build video, there's gonna be about a week delay for the next one. And the reason for that is I'm going to Cedia in Texas in a few days. I actually fly out on the 28th. It should be pretty exciting, but once I get back, I'll go right back to work on the build series. I really can't wait to share with you guys the final reveal. And a lot of the before and after pictures and videos are really, really cool. Like I can't believe how much work I've done on the room. It doesn't even look like the same room. It's super, super cool. So I can't wait to share that with you when I get back. And really just, if you're interested in CD, make sure you're subscribed as well, because I'm gonna be showing you some behind the scenes stuff and anything I could film there, I'm gonna put into a video. So super excited about that. Now, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below if you found value out of this series at all, if you've been inspired in some way. I really enjoy those types of comments. And honestly, that's really what this is all about for me. I, I wanted to share this journey with you and, and I luckily have a platform that I can do that and it doesn't cost you anything really. And just share my experiences with you and all the mistakes and mishaps that I've made. And honestly, if you take anything from this, it's like, don't make the same mistakes I have. Learn from my mistakes. That's why I'm making them so you don't have to. And if you've made mistakes yourself, let me know in the comment section below because you know what? Someone else might read it and benefit from that mistake that you've made and they don't make the same mistake. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.